there's something I forgot to say when shooting this video, which is there are actually two senses in which the statement limit x approaches c fx equals l could be false. One is that the function f is not defined around c, which means maybe it's not defined on the immediate left of c or on the immediate right of c. And in that case, it doesn't even make sense to ask for whether limit x approaches c fx is l because it doesn't even make sense to talk of the limit if the function is not defined around the point. The other is that the function is defined around the point, but the limit still is not uh, e uh, the limit being equal to l is still not true. And this video is focused on the latter sense. So we are sort of implicitly assuming that the function is defined on the immediate left and right. Okay. Uh, but the, but that other sense of the limit not existing, namely the function is not even defined on the immediate left or right, that's uh, that's important too, but we aren't considering that in this video. Okay, so in this talk we are going to give the definition of what it means to say that this statement, the one here, up here, is false. So, so far we've looked at what it means for this statement to be true. And now we're going to look at what it means for the statement to be false. And it's basically you just use the same definition, but you have to change a little bit of what it looks like. So, let me first remind you of the limit game, because that's a very nice way of thinking about the, the what it means for it to be true and false. So, what does the limit game say? It's a game between two players, a prover and a skeptic. What's the goal of the prover? To show he's right. To show that this is true. true and the skeptic is trying to show that this is false or at least trying to come up with the strongest evidence to suggest that this is false and how does the game proceed the skeptic begins by choosing an epsilon greater than zero what's the skeptic effectively trying to pick the skeptic is effectively trying to pick the this neighborhood of l and trying to challenge the prover to to trap the function value for x within that neighborhood. What's the neighborhood the skeptic is, is secretly picking? Uh, L minus epsilon. So L, L plus epsilon. epsilon. Okay, the prover chooses a uh, delta greater than zero. So the prover is now basically trying to pick a neighborhood of C, the domain point, on the point near the domain points, and and then the skeptic will then pick a value X, which is between the which is within the interval delta distance of c except the point c itself that's either delta interval on the left or delta interval on the right of c and then the judge comes along and computes this value absolute value fx minus l are we is this in the picture yes and if it's less than epsilon then the prover would have won but but now we want to figure out when the skeptic which so the skeptic wins if it's greater than or equal to epsilon that means fx is not in the epsilon in or neighborhood of L. By the way, this, this video assumes you already seen the previous videos where we where we gave these definitions and so I'm sort of reviewing it quickly but not explaining it in full detail. So the skeptic wins if fx is outside this interval. That means the prover failed to ma to rise to the skeptic's challenge of of trapping the function. Okay. Let's now try to work out concretely what this what the definition would read. So now the skeptic is the one in control because you want to figure out whether the skeptic has a winning strategy. Okay, so let me let me say this clearly. So this is just saying when does the skeptic win? But now in order to say that this limit statement is false, we need something stronger. What do we need to say that this is false? The skeptic should have should have a winning strategy. A winning strategy. I mean the skeptic should have a strategy such that whatever the prover does the skeptic has some way of winning. So what the, what should what should this read? If you actually translate it to the definition. There exists uh, There epsilon exists epsilon greater than greater zero. Greater than zero. Okay. Such that for Every delta. So, so the, so the skeptics, when the when is the skeptics move, the skeptic just says there exists. 
right? Because skeptic can pick. If, if anything works, the skeptic can pick that. But when it's a prover's move, the skeptic has no control. So this should read for every delta greater than zero. What is the, what will the next part read? There exists an X. Exists X you, sat in this interval. Yeah. Which we often, you often see it written in a slightly different form. Maybe I don't have space here, so this here it's also written as zero. Are we down here? Yes. This is the form it's usually written in, in the con concise definitions. We have this thing. So that so the definition it maybe it's not clear, but the definition would would read like oops. Like that. So there exists epsilon greater than zero such that for every delta greater than zero, there exists x in here, which you could also write like this, such that I guess I should put a such that. Such that absolute value of x minus l greater than equal to epsilon. Now let me just compare it with the usual definition for the limit to exist. Okay, the colors are are in reverse chrome. That's fine. So for every epsilon greater than zero became there exists epsilon greater than zero because the player who's in control has changed. There exists delta greater than zero became for every delta greater than zero. For all x with this became there exists x satisfying this condition. And what happened to the last clause? The less than epsilon became greater than or equal to. Right? So so the, the last clause just got reversed in meaning. All the others, we just changed the quantifier from for all to there exists and from there exists to for all. And that just is because we've changed who's who's winning. And if you've seen some logic or if you'll ever see logic, then, then there are some general rules of logic as to how to convert a statement to its opposite statement. And that's, this is a general rule that for all becomes there exists and there exists becomes for all.